What is the foster care journey like? What is the certification process like? What is it like to go through that interview that everyone fears? And is there really as much paperwork as everyone talks about with the uh, paperwork pregnancy? Let's see. And let's go, Dad. One, two, three. Let's go. Folks, as always, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it feels like it's true. I am in the car line waiting to pick up a child. This is a big part of being a parent. I, you know, I hope you look forward to it. <laughs> it is nice to have a little bit of time and space to kind of zone. I did want to check in about a question that one of our viewers has asked. His name is Will, and he has asked us, what is the certification process like? And it is different if you're single. It's a little different than if you're married. It might be shorter depending on who your person is. It might not be. So let's go, let's check it out. All right, let me start off by saying why you don't have to be a perfect parent to be a foster parent. I know there was an ad series a while back. If you haven't seen them, you should, cause they're funny, but about why you don't have to be a perfect parent to be a foster parent. And let me say it's so true. And in fact, if you come across as perfect during the home study process, that's gonna be a red flag. They're gonna go, okay, number one, no one's perfect, that's a problem. Number two, if this person hasn't been through some stuff, how are they gonna help kids and families who are going through stuff? Like, it doesn't make sense. Why would they even wanna be a foster parent? It's not that you have to have gone through stuff, but if you have like the perfect life, maybe you should get some experience in life before thinking about being a foster parent. I'm just saying, it's gonna be a slap in the face to you. Okay, the first thing I did now, well, first keep in mind that I have gone through this process in two different, not just counties, but two different states. And also I've gone through the recertification process and also I've gone through the transfer process. All of those are a little different. I'm sorry, I don't think I'll get them muddled. I have notes over here. I should have it straight, but, but it's a different process. But there are a lot of similarities, one from the other. And it is a process. And it's not as terrible as I thought it was going to be by any means. At least not in the two states I've been in, it was not as terrible as I was warned or thought or I don't know, dreamed that it could have been. First step, I called. I called the agency or the county and I said, hey, I wanna be a foster parent, what do I do? They said, okay, let me tell you first that if you're looking for a baby, that's probably not gonna happen. In fact, with the county, they said, we're not accepting foster parents who are only taking zero to three right now. You have to be willing to take kids older than that. And I said, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm game. Let's do this. Then they said, all right, we're gonna send you a packet of information. This is an initial questionnaire or initial application. With a private agency in California, it was a lot lighter than what I got with the county in Ohio. I don't know if that's state specific or if that is just the difference between those two organizations, not sure. But either way, filled that out. They said they'd respond quickly. The agency responded really fast, like uh, in a couple of days they responded, I think. And, and the county responded in about 10 days, if I remember right. So they responded pretty quickly after I turned in that paperwork. It was pretty simple stuff. Who's in the home with you? Why do you want to do foster care? Just a number of questions like that. Uh, after that, they sent me more paperwork, yay! And they scheduled an initial home interview or assessment. It wasn't even an interview. Literally, they came in and they walked around the home and were like, cool, cool, yeah, nice to meet you. And they, they purposely made it short. Like, I was totally prepared for questions. I was like, well, don't you wanna know this and this? And I didn't say that, but it was it was like that attitude of, uh, okay, you're leaving already? <laughs> like, you peeked around the home and they're like, yeah, there's enough space here. It's clean, it doesn't smell funny, yeah. Why not? Sure. And, and sure meaning not that you're certified, but sure meaning that we can go through the process with you. With the private agency, two people came out and with the county, it was just one person, but whatever. They came out, they looked around. It was great. And they did it during the school day for the county agency so that no one else was really around, just me. Uh, my parents purposely kind of left so they wouldn't be in the way. So yeah, it was just me. All right. So after the visit, two things happened. One, well, in California, I should say they sent me this big application they invited me to an orientation class. This is California. And after that orientation class, if I wanted to keep going, there would be two weekends, I believe it was, full days of training. I think included in that was first aid and CPR. All of that stuff was included. So that was good stuff. In Ohio, they had me sign up for the classes. I think that's where I received the application was from the classes. It's a little blurry at the moment, but you had a lot of classes. They're spread out over like three months. Uh, it, it was a little hard, I think, to spread it out that far. I was a little impatient. I tried to go to a couple different counties to get them done as fast as I could, especially since they did not offer trainings during the summer. I wanted to make sure I got them done without having that long period of wait, of nothing, of not making a step forward. Let me say with the agency, it took a while uh, after those trainings because I was slow to turn in paperwork. I actually really questioned if I knew 
that I wanted to do the foster care thing, I, I was really hesitant. I waited a long time. Yeah, I'm surprised they even kept me like on their <laughs> on their list of people who's going through the process, but they did and they were awesome. So that was cool. Oh, in Ohio, I just had to get first aid CPR within the first year of being a foster parent. Every member of my household had to get a physical. In California, I had a house by myself, so that wasn't a big deal. Got that physical, got it done. You might have to get a TB test, tuberculosis test. They prick you in the arm. You come back a little while later, a few days later, and they check to see what it looks like. It's just a step. Then you take that piece of paper, you turn it into your, into your agency. Possibly one of the longer parts of the process is background checks. Getting it scheduled, getting an appointment can be hard depending on time of year. One place, I think when we talked to the sheriff here, they were like, no, we're not doing them right now because of the pandemic. Uh, man, and so that was disappointing, but then we found a place that would do them for us and did them quickly. But depending, those can take a while to come back. Ours did not. Yeah, I don't think in either place, mine took very long to come back. So that was great easy. Okay, here's a huge difference one state to the other. In the state I'm currently in, there was a fire inspection where the fire marshal came into our home, like looked around, told us things, had some conversations with us, made sure we had fire extinguishers in the right places, looked at our smoke detectors, like he spent some time with us. Yeah, that was that was a little nerve-wracking, but it went well and he was a nice guy. I've heard there are some fire marshals that are a little harder on families than the one we got, so we lucked out there. California, there was not a fire marshal, unless that's changed now because this was several years ago, but there was not a fire marshal who came to my home. Like the fire marshal was an Ohio thing. California, I think the social worker did all the stuff the fire marshal did. He checked fire extinguishers. He checked to make sure smoke detectors were okay. He made sure there was an evacuation plan up posted on every floor of my home. Ultimately, not that hard. We did have to draw a rough copy of our house on a piece of paper and show which way we would go for each exit. And we had to have that posted on both floors. And I am not an artist, I'll tell you that right now. If ever you see our evacuation plans in the background, feel free to laugh. Yeah, yeah, I'm not an artist. Pets in your home need vaccines, so they'll want to see the vaccine list. Also, uh, if your animal has ever had issues, they'll want to know about it. If they've ever, ever bit someone, they'll want to know. They'll ask you a few questions around that. Ultimately, it's not that big of a deal to give them a list of the pet vaccines. Not really. References. All right, for one of the places, references got held up for me. I think one person took a little longer to turn in their reference. Took like two weeks to actually mail it out. Forgot to do it, I think I had to call them and remind them. But not a big deal. I keep saying that, not a big deal. It's, it's a reference, you get it done, right? I mean, come on. My least favorite thing, the income and expense form. Why do I hate this? Oh man. Well, first of all, you have to collect, I think bills from the last three months. So utility, cell phone, all of that stuff. Ours is digital, so it was a lot of printing. Not hard, just a pain. And you have to mail those, or you have to get those in. And they have to be, yeah, I do think they have to be within the last three months. The part I don't like is going through and listing your budget. I always feel like I'm being judged, like they're going, oh, is he gonna be able to make this money-wise or whatever? No one's ever said anything about it. They've always just been like, okay, cool. Because it has to be in, right? So that income expense report, a pain to fill out. I don't know why, I really struggle filling that out. I, I wonder if other people have that experience too. I don't know, but it's not fun for me. <laughs> I do not enjoy it. I'll take all the rest of the paperwork over that. Okay, the dirt. What some of you are waiting to hear. What was the interview like? Well, in California, the interview was in two parts, not including that initial home visit where they walked around, because again, there wasn't much of a conversation there. Tiny bit, a little bit. I think they might've even asked, oh, so why do you want to do this or whatever? But, but not a huge amount of questions. California was pretty laid back. They wanted to know about everyone I'd ever dated. They wanted to know about the different relationships in my life, my relationship with my parents, my brothers, other extended family members. They wanted to know about my friends, just to make sure I had a support network. They wanted to know who was gonna support me as a single dad, who I could go to when I needed help or I had an emergency. Obviously, they wanted to know why I was doing foster care or why I was interested in doing foster care. And so they asked me about that. They asked me who would take the kids if something happened to me. So if I were to die today, who would the, the kids go to? That was a hard thing to think through and I honestly hadn't thought about it before that. Not very much, but it was it was good to have that question to think through it. What do I think about education? How, how would I plan for that? What if I had a kid with special needs? How would I do discipline? These types of questions. I feel like it was a lot longer and more intense in Ohio than California. Maybe that's just because it was more recent. <laughs> um, in California, it was still two sessions of interview. In Ohio, actually I think in Ohio it was three. I think he came out to our house three times. Maybe he didn't spend quite as much time, still spent a good amount of time. It was a long interview for Ohio. Yeah, and the one for Ohio, it felt like they had wrote questions that they asked everyone 
In California, I'm not sure that's true. I, I feel like they ask people similar questions, but there were a few in there that, that I'm not sure were. They wanna know how you handle mental health issues with kids, special needs, what if your kid ends up being gay? How would you handle that? These are all common questions. And it's things you need to think through if you're gonna have a kid, foster wise or other anyway. The home inspection. I enjoyed doing the interview, to be honest with you. I like that part, but I like talking about foster care. Like I was so excited. Obviously, look at what I'm doing now. I love talking about foster care, super excited about it. So that was chill for me. I liked that, I enjoyed that. The thing I panicked about was the home inspection. Oh, and you know, they'd been in my home a bunch. So why was I nervous about it? I don't know. I cleaned the house like you wouldn't believe. Like everything was bleached. So I was so disappointed when they came in and they were like, cool, cool. Yep, show me the fire extinguishers. Yep, we've already checked it, but let's see them again. Cool, smoke detectors, okay, cool. Children's room, no funny smells, cool, okay. Yep, let's look over here, let's look over there. Like it was a quick inspection. I'm sure they got everything they needed to see that it was a safe home. They wanted to know if I had a pool, which thankfully I don't because pools are hard in foster care. Like the regs around those, I would not recommend having a pool. Like if you're thinking about doing foster care and you have the choice of where you're moving, not recommend having a pool because there's a lot of headaches and added regs that go along with having a pool. They check the water temperature. They will take a thermometer and they will check the water temperature and it has to be within whatever the, whatever the range is for your state. I think here it has to be between, oh, I wanna say it has to be between 110 and 120, but I'm not sure it might be 100 and 120 in that range. I should know that by heart. They check it enough, but but it's always been okay. So it hasn't been an issue here. One of the big things here, they wanna make sure every window has a screen. Oh no, this one doesn't. No, your car's fine. But they wanna make sure that every window has a screen, especially kids' bedroom windows, but all of them, and they'll check. And they wanna make sure that you have two drawers for every child. That's a reg, I think it was a reg in California too, as it is in Ohio. There has to be at least a two drawer part of a dresser for every child. And depending on your worker, if it's a small dresser, they may not accept just two little drawers. It probably needs to be enough for the kid to keep their stuff in. Again, they smell for smells. So if you have a cat that pees on everything, uh-oh, they're gonna pay attention to that. Uh, if there's any kind of weird, funny smells in the house that could be drugs, they're gonna pay attention to that. All of those things matter. I don't know that the cat thing is a deal breaker for them, but it's certainly gonna be a conversation. I've heard some people talking about this process and it sounds a lot harder than it has been for me. Personally, it's a long process, especially in Ohio, it was a very long process. California, it was only long because I made it long. I, I like didn't do anything for months. And that was because I was questioning whether I wanted to do it really or not, I was scared to death. Well, ask questions down there. Uh, if I think of more, I'll probably record a little more once I get home, because I see the kids are starting to get out of school. Yikes. Oh, really quickly before they come to the car <laughs> or before uh, they start coming in here and disrupting us. Oh, interrupt our conversation. One thing I wanna say is that they do separate if you have kids in your family or any other adults in your family, if you're married, they will separate you and interview you separately for a good portion of the interview. They wanna see if you have the same feelings about foster care, they wanna see if you parent the same way as far as how you plan to handle discipline, how you feel about adoption, if it turns to adoption. They, they wanna see that you are on the same page. So the best thing to do is start talking with your spouse right away if you're married, or if you have other people that live with you, talk with them. They asked my parents about uh, how we handle disagreements. I'm sure they do that with married couples as well. Do you remember when the social worker named Nick came to our home and asked you some questions? He asked me questions and then he wanted to speak to you alone. Do you remember that at all? You don't remember it at all? No, about stuff. Do they ask you if I'm a good dad? Yes, they do. They do? Do they ask you? They also ask me, I think, sometimes they ask me if a kid would be safe in our house. And what do you say? I say yes. I kind of say, yeah, what do you? In a way, I almost want to say, duh, why do you think I'm here? Because <laughs> I'm still here, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and people should be themselves, huh? And yes, answer definitely. honestly. Yeah. Because eventually it'll come out if they aren't. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thanks for sharing. Grandma's next. They asked how we felt about having children in the home. Oh, they asked you how many kids should be in the home? What we thought, yeah. What oh, I remember, because Dad said that he'd be comfortable with four. Oh, did he? Yeah. By the way, it's Mother's Day, so Grandma gets to, to lie down. <laughs> We're not making her get up. They asked how we communicate with each other, and yeah, if we had disagreements. and. I know I said, really, we don't have very many disagreements. We, I guess, would talk them out eventually, maybe not right away, but. We kind of work things out ahead of time before they become disagreements. Yeah. Well, different ground. Yeah. We talk a lot as a family, like the three of us especially, but 
Robert's included in that. We have a lot of discussions, I don't know, on the same page, I would say. Yeah, and you tell us, we try to follow whatever your rules and your guidelines are for the kids. We try, you know, we usually feel the same way. Yeah, we just, like I said, we usually don't let things get to the point where they are a disagreement. So they're gonna ask you a number of questions, all important. I mean, think about it. The kid's gonna try and drive you apart. Most, most of these kids, they're gonna try and play you off against each other. And so it's really important that you're on the same page and you know how to get on the same page. And they're gonna be checking to see that. That is so huge for this process. So lots of training hours required. Lots of, oh, well, let me say too, that once you've been certified, the training doesn't stop. To keep certified, you get training every year. Thanks for watching. Let's go, Dad.